But he started toddling and could take a few steps. And he could walk. He just walked in the den. Finally, he crawled up the steps, then started walking again. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't walk up the steps. Y'all see this progression? Yes, he wanted to walk up the steps, but he knew he couldn't. Because you can see him trying to raise that leg up, and that one leg, he, uh -oh. he, he couldn't hold it. He do that. He go back with the top of it. Crawling. And even right now, when he's in a hurry, he get back on his knees right now. <laughs> but every time he gets to the steps even now, he's going to get back on his knees because he can't walk around the steps yet. So now, when he come down that first hall, and he get to that second hall, because he know him back there. Not only does he look, but because now he's walking, I guess he has more confidence. So he'll come down the hall. <laughs> he'll get in the bedroom, and he'll look. Sometimes I'll just hide to see if he finds it. <laughs> and if he doesn't find it in a few seconds, he gone. <laughs> now, here's the, the challenge he has right now. He's walking, he can crawl, he got that, oh, he's a master crawl. But this walking now, he's, he's got it now, he can walk fast and everything, but what he has a problem with is turning around real quick. Uh -huh. he, he doesn't know how to pivot yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so what he does, when he gets to that, he walks real fast, he almost just stops. <laughs> you don't know how to let me incorporate that. Come on, read. I'm going to incorporate that. When they start walking, uh -huh. they fall and start crying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because when you first start walking, you fall. Yeah. You begin to cry. Yeah. He ought to be so flat behind. <laughs> I mean, boom. But he get right back up again. He likes this new thing. Yeah. See, when God doing that new thing for you, right. you may fall, but you get right back up because he likes that new thing. You don't want to go back to crawl. You want to be able to go down this hall, and go down that hall, and do a little exploring. See, he didn't know those rooms were back there. Now you know they're back there. In every room, he got something he go to. He found a treat in every room. He found one of his old walking. You know how you sit those babies in the walk and they feet on the floor, but they got that little thing around them. He found that thing. He was in there playing with the toys on it, but he don't ever want to get in it again. So you crawl, then you walk, read it. But they get back up again. Uh -huh. Why? Because they like this new thing called walking. Come on. Hear this. God creates change, not to stop your boredom. God not trying to keep you excited. Uh -huh. The change is not to break up monotony. Uh -huh. But read it. But to increase your pleasure. Because he wants you to leave your pain. Yeah. Yes. Come on. It's going to be uncomfortable. Yeah. You may have to make sacrifices in your finances. All right. Your standard of living may be lower mm -hmm. because of the change. All right. God speak to you to leave the one city, go to another city. I remember when Jake left uh, the East Coast and came to Dallas. Mm -hmm. There were people that moved to Dallas. They didn't just quit their jobs. They put in applications. <laughs> and they put in their resumes, <laughs> resumes. You see what I'm saying? They knew he was moving. They wanted to be part of the ministry. Some of them were on staff, but they were not paid staff. And God had assigned them to that ministry. And to make that change, it was going to be uncomfortable. But I'd rather be uncomfortable and come out of the pain of being disobedient. Got some people right now that are disobedient to the word of God because uh, it's uncomfortable to them to do what God wants them to do. Well, you just stay in there and see when he beat you. That's the scripture. The Bible says when a person knows to do better and doesn't do better, God won't put some pain on you. That's what the Bible says. He's going to beat you with many stripes. You're going to say, hey, God, that's enough, God. Uh-uh. You're going to get many strikes. It's not going to stop just because now you're ready. He just going to keep telling my grandma used to be hooked. I said, Mom, I'm not going to do it no more. She said, I know you're not going to do it no more. <laughs> <laughs> and then you remember that whipping because she 
he wouldn't stop. Yeah. Read this thing. That's why you should be willing to pursue change, to stop the pain and increase the pleasure. And it increases your pleasure by stopping the pain. It may not make you uncomfortable with some discomfort to change. But you need to go with the discomfort versus the pain. Read this just as we close. Next time we will look into the crisis of trust. Uh -huh. Whose voice will I trust? Because once change occurs, your next crisis you're going to have is that of trust. Amen. Who can you trust? Mm -hmm. Who can you share with? Yes, Who can you believe? I promise you, who a person trusts, that's who they believe. If the person, some people are untrustworthy, and people are believing people that are untrustworthy, and they have belief in them. Y'all not in it. Read what I have. Do you remember at times someone you had confidence in that was teaching you and let you down because you found out they were not straight or thought they were not? Or, the, or yeah, or thought they were not. There will be a crisis of trust. I believe God uses disappointments to birth relationships with Him. When? You become disappointed. It will birth a greater relationship with God. And then you'll start living by scripture. Not to place confidence in man. The Bible says not to place your confidence, which is your total trust, in a man. That's gender inclusive, men or women. And when that disappointment you will then have to rely upon God. You open yourself up for that hurt by trusting in a human being. So it births a better relationship with God. When they let you down, then they disappoint. Let me say you will be disappointed because no man, no woman on this planet can walk this earth without leaving disappointing somebody sometime. Sometimes the expectations that we place on people are super saint or Jesus Junior. The standard that they try to place you on, they living in the lower standard. I believe when God lets disappointment grow in your life, it is tearing down every idol we have built. Because what we've done, we've built up in our lives various idols. Read what I have. If you build your business, job, career, or Some life, people will spend more time for the man. All right. mm -hmm. yeah. For their customers. Mm -hmm. They'll skip God, serving God. Mm -hmm. That's an idol. Yeah. You may not call it an idol. I don't care what you call it, I'm telling you what it is. Whenever you place something in front of God, that has become a habit. Read it. Job, career, or relationships Come upon on. anything but God, eventually they will fail. Come on. If you build your life around your child or children instead of the Holy Spirit, Come on. the child will crush your heart and suffocate. That same child that you poured your life into, you poured your money into, you poured your resources into, Y'all not in here with me. They'll end up crushing you because they're little people subject to the same family as the grown people. The problem is we are with these children when they fail. I'm not going to say that that strong. Bag off of that. It's nobody to whip us when we are failing as a parent. You should use that belt in, 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 in instances where it's warranted. My mother never whipped my back, so my mother never did whip me, so I can't use her. Let me use my grandmother. <laughs> my grandmother just gave everybody a whooping. If one person did it, all y'all come in. Y'all can't get the story straight. She said, well, who did such and such? Well, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, and everybody come out and whooped me. All y'all come in. And she whooped everyone. Now, I'm what they call a tattoo when it came to whipping. Now, I'm going to tell them for whipping one of them I keep your seat. But if it means me or you, your little hind and the hind to be on the ball is going to get whipped. Because I'm going to tell Grandma it was him. It's him. He did it. He did it. I saw him when he did it. I was standing on that by the tree. I'll tell him where I was. I give her my alibi.
this thing. I gotta go. So God uses disappointment to correct your focus. So, so folks, when you get disappointed, now you correct your focus. Mm -hmm. Now you take it off of that individual or situation or whatever that thing let you down. Now you focusing again. You refocusing on God now. Because you need God help now. Because you feel some pain now. You hurt now. They broke your heart. You disillusioned. So now you refocus on God, really. To correct your energy, uh -huh. your values, yeah. and God allows our disappointment with people to correct our focus on Him. Because you need to refocus on God. Come on, put your hands together. We got to go. Come on, put your hands together. Remember that change is uncomfortable. But God is creating the change to get you out of the pain. When that prodigal son was down in the hall pit, he was in a lot of pain. But it took him a long time to come to himself. And so God let things get worse. And where God wasn't causing it, it was his actions that caused him to be in the hall pit. Yeah. And the Bible said the man got so hungry that he was about to eat with the hall pit. Yeah. See, God created the pain. But see, the only discomfort was going to be to go back to the Father. Yeah. And said, Father, I have sinned. See, that's, that's, that's the uncomfortable. Just forgive me because I have sinned against you and him. That's the Bible. See, that's what I'm telling you. You just can't get right with God. You got to get right with folks down here first. See, see the, the earthly father, that wasn't talking about God. I'm talking about the earthly father. He went back to his father and said, I've sinned against you and I've sinned against him. I've sinned against the earthly father and my heavenly father. And he says, I know that you have hired servants. He said, just make me like one of the hired servants. And that father said, uh-uh, bring him a ring. Bring him a ring. Someone said, bring him a ring. Can I say it like this? Bring him a new ring that nobody else has been wearing. Bring him a new robe that nobody else has been wearing. Bring him some new slippers. Y'all not in. And the boy hadn't even had a shower yet. That's why some people, y'all are judgmental because you, the, you, you still smelling some of the old life. But they got a new life. Because the Father has already closed them in their clothes. They already asked God to forgive them. And they're on their way to being delivered. But your problem is you're looking at the situation from the outward appearance. But God tells them looking at their heart. And in their heart, he's already turned. He said, I will go back to the Father. While he was in the hog pit. While he was stuck in the mud. But in his heart, he'd already turned. But if you still 